You alright back there? I'll have nobody dying in my class today. Okay, let's begin. All of these objectives take a very short amount of time, so as long as we manage our time well, you'll have most of your class period to work on the assignment again like last time. But we gotta manage our time well. Meaning Courtney has to turn around back there. There we go. Okay. Let's talk about angles in standard position. Don't don't worry about this off to the right just yet. Focus on this graph. Draw a blank graph. Uh, unfreeze. Just draw a blank graph. Don't worry about this writing off to the right just yet. This will take you back to geometry days. Remember an angle. An angle looks like this. You don't have to draw this yet on the graph, but I'm going to draw it off to the off to the left. An angle. Isn't this an angle right here? What's the little corner called? You guys remember? Vertex. Whoa, whoa. So to have an angle to be in standard position, the vertex has to be right on the origin. And one of the sides has to lie along the x-axis going off to the right. This is what's called standard position. So it's just a regular angle, but the vertex is at the origin. And one of the sides lies along the x-axis. That's all it is. Okay. Now the side that lies along the x-axis is called the initial side. Initial kind of like starting point. This is where the angle starts from. This is where we begin measuring the angles on the initial side. The side that's off in space out here is called the terminal side. Now, drawing angles in standard position is fine, but what we're really, really interested in is drawing specific angles with specific measurements. So let's talk about this. Measure of angles in standard position. Start on the initial side. And starting on the initial side, you have two choices. You can either go upwards counterclockwise, so up and to the left, that would give you a positive angle measurement. Or you can start at the initial side and move down and to the right, that's the clockwise direction, that would give you a negative angle measure. You can measure angles both ways, positively in the counterclockwise or negatively in the clockwise direction. So, Forget about this, ang this specific angle. What if I started on the initial side and measured all the way up to this straight up line? What, how many degrees would that be? Up from here to here? You guys know this. Yell it out. Only three of you know this. From here up to here. From here up to this straight up and down line here. 90. Okay. Whew. I, I was make You guys are making me worry that you didn't know a 90 degree angle. No, fr from here up to this black line is 90 degrees. What about if we started the initial side and went all the way to this line right here? 180. Now, in geometry, that's where you stopped. You had angles that went from 0 to 180. Um, between 0 and 90, what were those angles called? Acute. If it went beyond 90, those are obtuse. But you didn't study any angles that went beyond 180. We're going to study those. 
What if you went on the initial side, went through 180 degrees and ended here? It, it's not quite 360 yet. 270, because you have to add another 90 degrees. What if you went all the way around the circle? 360. Or you could say that that's zero degrees if you don't even move around the circle at all. So zero degrees is the same as 360. Now we don't have a protractor. Well, actually, actually I do. You want to see something cool? Check this out. Wait for it. This is going to blow your mind. Come on now. Isn't this sweet? Now we can now we can measure this angle. What would we estimate? Should we say this is about 60 degrees? Let's round it up to the nearest uh, power of t or uh, multiple of 10. So let's say 60. So let's say this is a 60 degree angle. In order to have this be positive 60 degrees, we're going to have to measure starting from the initial side and up that direction. What would the equivalent negative angle measure for this exact angle be if we went down close? Negative 300. Why is it negative 300? How would you get negative 300? Well, where did the 300 come from? Good, good. If we started... So you guys follow along with this. If I started the initial side and just went down to this line, how many negative degrees is that? Negative 90 to here is negative 180, negative 270. And then this little piece makes it negative 300. So negative 300 would be equivalent to positive 60. They're the same thing. Okay. All right. Let's practice here. Oh, wait, 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 stop. One thing I forgot, sorry. Um, this graph breaks the plane up into four regions. They're called quadrants. You're going to hear me say this word every now and again, so you need to know what I'm talking about. Quadrants, there's four of them. And we we start with quadrant one and then go counterclockwise. So this one will be quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Don't ask me why, but traditionally their quadrants are always numbered with Roman numerals. Those are called the four quadrants. It has to be measured counterclockwise, starting in this top right corner. That being said, let's practice drawing a 200 degree angle. Now, we're not going to be exact because we don't have protractors, and that's not the point. The point is that the terminal side is in the correct quadrant. So think about 200 degrees. What quadrant is it going to lie in the terminal side? Three, right. Now we, we can we can be as exact as possible. Is it going to be closer to 180 degrees or closer to 270? It's going to be closer to 180. So just make sure when you draw that terminal side, it's a little bit closer to 180 than it is to 270. It's not right in the middle. That's 225. So the initial side is here. Terminal side is going to be about here. And how do we show that we measured this in the positive direction and not the negative? We started the initial side and draw a little circle that way. 200 degrees. Let's try uh, part B. Negative 330. Initial side has to lie along the x-axis again. But now just think what quadrant we're going to end up in. And be careful because this is a negative angle. Quadrant 1. It's the same thing as 30 degrees, yeah. So negative 330, you're going to go all the way around clockwise until you end up back in quadrant 1. And to show that you've measured this in the negative direction, you have to start at the initial side and move clockwise. 
negative 330. Okay, this one's going to seem a bit strange. How's that work? Yeah, just go around a complete revolution, and then whatever's left after that revolution. Re revolution means one turn of a circle. So if you go around a complete circle, how many degrees are left? So uh, a, a circle is 360. So if we, if we take away that full circle that we went around, what's left over? 150. So we have to go around the circle one complete time. Plus how many more degrees? 150, which is going to be which quadrant? Quadrant 2. But you have, to, you have to show that you drew a 510 degree angle and not a 150 degree angle. As a spot, exactly. Good. Man, you guys are sharp today. Must be because of the end of the term. You guys have been... Uh, I don't know. Why are you so sharp today? Getting ready for graduation? The Hunger Games? Today? Good luck. Who saw the Hunger Games last night? Raise your hand. A couple of you. Don't spoil anything because I haven't seen it yet, but was it good? As good as the book? I'm so excited, though. Okay, anyway, we're getting out of traffic. That's what I don't want to feel is the emo. I just want to see them killing each other. I don't want to. I don't want to hear Katniss whining about Gail, Peter, Gail, Peter. They can leave all that out. I just want to see them run around shooting people. So is there a lot of that? Then, then I will be happy. What's that? Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, who you mentioned a spiral? That, that's exactly right. We have to start at the initial side, go all the way around. And then go up that extra piece. This is 510 degrees. I'm glad. Now we've actually we've actually already covered objective two. Look back at your notes. What was objective two? Co-terminal angles. We've we've actually already covered it, but I didn't I didn't tell you we were covering it. Let me tell you what co-terminal angles are. Well, let me show you an example of what they are. 510 degrees and 150 degrees are co-terminal. What do they have in common? It's the same angle, is essentially right. What's the only difference between 510 and 150? 510 is just one complete extra cycle, right? But you're going to end up in the same spot. Those are called coterminal angles. The difference between coterminal angles is how many degrees? 360. Okay? The difference between coterminal angles is a difference of 360 degrees. Now, let me ask you a tricky question. Think about this. Is 150 degrees the only coterminal angle for 510? What if I went another complete revolution? And then another one, and then a, how many coterminal angles could there be? Infinitely many. Okay. If I ask you to find a coterminal angle for a given angle, you can add 360, or you can add two 360s, or you can add 10 360s, because uh, all you're doing is going around a circle and ending up in the same spot. So let's try it. Example three. This should be fairly easy. If I say find a coterminal angle for 210 degrees, what would you do? Add 360, because right? uh, that just means one complete revolution. So if you add 360, you're going to get 570. Now your homework is going to ask for two things. They're going to want a positive coterminal angle, but then they're going to want a negative Co-terminal angle as well. So starting from the original one, how could we find a negative co-terminal angle? 
subtract 360. Negative 150. Man, you guys. Maybe it's just my second period. Maybe they're just, uh, they didn't eat their Wheaties this morning. I don't know what happened to them. You guys are answering questions so much better. If you're listening to this second period, I still love you guys. Okay, there's objective one and two. Let me hand out your homework. We'll get started. I'll give you five or six minutes to work on it. Okay. Now, you guys, this is, uh, this is not something you've covered before in geometry or anything else. Radians. If you don't pay very good attention to something, you might miss it and then be lost. Radian measure. Okay, It's very closely related to circles because radian comes from the same root word as radius. They're very closely related. So in discussing radian measure, I'm going to refer back to circles quite often. Now, let me get a different color here. Here we go. If I drew this angle, do we know what that measures in degrees? That's an easy one. Yeah, 90. Now, radian measure is just a different way to measure an angle. It's the same exact angle. It's just a different unit of measure, like measuring something in yards and meters. You're not changing the distance if you measure something in yards or meters, are you? You're just changing the unit. That's the same relationship, kind of, that radians... Kind, yeah. This is the same relationship that degrees have with radians. Now, think back to uh, even Algebra 1, I think, is when you guys learned this. What's it called when you measure around the complete outer edge of a circle? Circumference, right? So let's talk about circumference. Oh, 10. Circumference. I'll be really impressed if anybody remembers the formula for it. Really impressed. Hey, yeah. Pi times diameter. Good. Really good. Now, I'm, I'm going to use an alternate form of this. I'm going to call it 2 pi times the rate. Two pi r squared would be the area of a circle. But uh, I'm g instead of calling it pi times diameter, diameter is just 2 radius, right? So I'm going to call it 2 pi r, and you're going to see why in a second. Are we okay with the formula 2 pi r for the circumference? Now, what if I say specifically this circle that I've drawn has a radius of 1? Then what would this circumference be? If, it's, if this radius is a radius of 1, what is the circumference? 2 pi times 1, which is just 2 pi, isn't it? If, if radius is 1, then this becomes 2 pi. This is a very specific type of circle called the unit circle. Unit circle has a radius of 1. And the circumference, I'm going to change this circumference of unit circle. The circumference of the unit circle is just 2 pi. Because the radius is 1. Do you guys agree with that? The circumference of a unit circle is strictly 2 pi? Because it's 2 pi times the radius, but the radius is 1. Now, this is the idea behind radians. You guys listen carefully. What portion of the complete unit circle does 90 degrees cover? I'm talking about this right here. That's a fourth of the entire unit circle, isn't it? Well, what's, what's the entire measure of the unit circle? 2 pi, right? But if 90 degrees is only a fourth of that, then 90 degrees is the same as 1 fourth of 2 pi. And what's one-fourth of 2 pi? This is 2 pi over 4, which is the same as what? 1 half pi, or pi over 2. What I'm, what I'm showing you here is that 90 degrees is the exact same as pi over 2 radians. They're equivalent. And the way, the way we're thinking about radians here is what portion of the unit circle does 90 degrees cover? What portion of the unit circle did 90 degrees cover? 
A fourth. That's where the fourth came from. Where did the two pi come from? That's the entire circumference. But 90 degrees is only one fourth of that. Okay. Let's make sure we got this. Pi over two radians is equivalent to what? What's it the same as? But in degrees, I mean. It's the same as 90 degrees. Okay. Pi over two radians is the exact same thing as 90 degrees. They're equivalent to each other. Let's let's keep on this idea here. What if I drew this angle? 45 degrees. What portion of the unit circle does 45 degrees come? It's an eighth, right? From here to here is one eighth of an entire unit circle. So an entire unit circle is two pi, but we're only taking an eighth. So it's two pi over eight, which is pi over four. So pi over four is the equivalent as what degree measure? 45 degrees. Okay, this is this is the idea of radians versus degrees. One is in degree measure, the other one is in radian measure, but they're describing the exact same angle. Let's try one more using this method, then I'll show you a different method. What about this angle? This is 180 degrees. What portion of the unit circle would measure this angle? Half. So half of the unit circle results in what? 2 pi over 2. Thank you. No, that's it. Thank you. It's just 1 pi, right? Or pi? Pi radians is equivalent to what degrees? 180. Now, this method is fine and good as long as I'm giving you angle measures that divide a circle evenly, right? What about something like this? It's easy to know that 180 degrees is half of a unit circle, but it's not quite as easy to know 35 degrees is what portion of a unit circle. So luckily, there's, there's a different method than the one I just described, and it's very easy. Raise your hand if you're taking physics. Have or currently? Only two of you? What science are you guys taking then? What? Take physics. Man. Chemistry is pretty cool. Anyway, even though you may not be in physics, you might have seen this before. You guys don't need to write this down. It's not part of the lesson, but it's going to describe what I'm going to do here. What if, you're, what if you're driving a car going 25 miles per hour? My, me neither, but mine would be like 125. Anyway, 25 miles per hour. What if you're interested? Starting to lose it, you guys. Come on, focus. What if I'm interested in miles per second, not miles per hour? How do you convert this to miles per second? You that you that have taken physics, you do this in chemistry. This is called unit analysis. You change the units. This is miles per hour. Which unit? If I want to end up in miles per second, which unit here am I going to try to cancel first? Hour. Because I want to get rid of hours and go into seconds. So if I want to cancel hours and hours is on the bottom, what unit has to appear on the top here? Hours. One hour is how many minutes? 60 minutes. But now I don't want to be in minutes. What do I want to be in? Seconds. So now I have to cancel minutes. So one minute has to go on top is equivalent to 60 seconds. Raise your hand if you've seen something like this before. This is, yeah, this is called unit analysis. We're going out of hours into what? Seconds. And miles remained because we want miles per second. This is called uh, unit analysis. Now we're going to do the same type of thing on degrees. I need to multiply this by a fraction in order to cancel degrees on the top. What has to be on the bottom down here? Degrees is on top here, so when I cancel, when I multiply it by something, degrees has to be on the bottom, right? Because I want to go from degrees into radians. So degrees has to be on top, radians has to be 
Degrees has to be on the bottom, radians has to be on the top. Why is it so important that degrees is on bottom? Because the degree here cancels with that degree sign. But we have to have something to multiply it by. And you guys, this is extremely important. Think back to this unit analysis we just did right here. Isn't one hour the exact same thing as 60 minutes? What's something divided by itself? One. So all we did is take 25 and multiply it by one, essentially, didn't we? We have to do the same thing here. What radians is the exact same thing as degrees? 180 degrees is the exact same as pi radians, isn't it? Aren't those equivalent? Didn't we just talk about this? 180 is the same thing as pi radians. So if I multiply something by pi over 180, aren't I essentially, aren't I, am I? Am I not? What's the correct word there? Am I not just multiplying 35 by 1? Pi radians is the same as 180 degrees, correct? So this is essentially just 1, which is why this method works, because if you multiply 1 by a number, it doesn't change the number. The important thing is, though, degrees cancel, and this turns into 35 pi over 180, which is a radian measure, because the degree symbol is gone. We got to simplify this fraction, though. 35 over 180 simplifies down to a smaller fraction. Seven pi over thirty-six. So thirty-five degrees is exactly equivalent to seven pi over thirty-six rate. That's how you convert back and forth from degrees into radians. Let's have you guys try one on your own. One hundred twenty degrees. What are we going to multiply this by? Why does 180 have to come on the bottom? Yep, and you guys don't even have to write the word radians and degrees. Just multiply it by pi over 180. What do you get? 2 pi over 3. Good. This is 120. Very good. 120 over 180. That simplifies down to 2 pi over 3. Yeah. If you're going from degrees into radians, yeah, because the degrees, one has to be on the bottom, one has to be on the top in order to cancel out. Now, we're going to skip part C because we're running short on time. What about going the other way? What about if I start in radians and I want to go back into degrees? Now, what do you multiply it by? You guys, you guys can figure this out. You're smart. 180 over pi. Good. How come the pi symbol has to be on the bottom this time? Because the pi symbol is not, because degree measures don't have a pi symbol in them. So if you're going from radians into degrees, somehow you got to cancel those pi symbols. That means one of them has to be on the bottom, and one's on the top. So it's, I, it's always either going to be pi over 180 or 180 over pi. It's up to you to remember which one is which. And it just depends on which unit measure you're going into. If you're going into degrees, you need to cancel pi. How do you simplify this, though? You guys do know this. Yeah, negative 900. Where did the negative 900 come from? 180 times negative 5, that's all divided by 4, which is negative 225 degrees. So you just, you just got to remember, it's either pi over 180 or 180 over pi. You got to do your best. Take, that's why you take good notes. Use this as a reference. 
Okay, I was planning on giving you a few minutes to practice some on your worksheet, but just so we're sure we don't run out of time, let's go right into the last objective. This one is really short, even shorter than objective three. We're almost done, you guys. Hang with me here. Arc length. It's, it's very closely related to radians, except radians is only the measure around the outside of a unit circle. Arc length, we are adding a radius that's not one. So these can be any, any length of a radius. And we're measuring this portion okay, right here. That's called the arc length. Arc length is always abbreviated by the letter S. S stands for arc length. And this is the formula. Arc length equals R. R stands for the radius. And theta is just whatever angle measure. And they're going to give you the angle measure. It's going to be given. Now, I need you to put this somewhere where you're going to see it. Every time you see this formula in your notes, you need to be able to look at this to remind yourself, because students forget this all the time and it ends up costing them a ton of points on tests. In order to use this formula, the angle has to be radian measure. And they'll do it on purpose on tests. They'll give you something that's a degree measure to see if you're paying attention. What do you do if it's in degrees? Change it to radians. Good. Change it to radians and then use the formula. So, really easy one to practice here. This is, yeah, 3 pi over 4. That's the measure of the angle. Now, how do you look at a number and decide if it's degrees or radians? How do we know? This has a pi in it, so it must be radians. And it doesn't have the little degree symbol, so it can't be a degree measure. So since we're already in radian measure, we can simply follow the formula. S for arc length. What's the formula? What do I multiply here? Four times the angle, 3 pi over 4. Yep, which is 3 pi. Because the 4s, in this case, the 4s will cancel. Now you have to put the unit of measure. It's 3 pi inches. But that's all it is. Let's do one off your worksheet. Turn your worksheet to the back side. Go to number 17. What's the, uh, is the radius, the radius is 10, right? And the angle, what's the angle? Now it, hope, but even if it weren't marked, which, which arc are they trying to find? This one here? Are they trying to find the measure of this arc? No. It's the, out, it's the other way. It's, they want to find the measure of this arc right here because that's how they've measured the angle. So S equals radius. Times the angle. What do we do now, though? Multiply. And then you can simplify. Or you can simplify first. It doesn't matter. I, I usually like to simplify first. For example, 4 and 10, what does that simplify down to? 5 and 2. Now if you multiply, you get 35 pi over 2. What was the unit of measure? Kilometers. So it's 35 pi over 2 kilometers. That's the measure of that arc. Yeah, big circle.
where could they possibly use something? I don't know if you guys noticed driving by on Redwood Road. All most of the fields here in Saratoga Springs are what shape? They're circles, right? I don't know if you guys have you guys noticed that? Hey, what if what if uh, we need to measure around the outer side of one of these fields? We need you know this stuff. It's it's not just stuff we do on paper. It's used. This might be even more important to some of our farmers out here in Saratoga Springs sector area. This is it. This is the last one. And just think, you don't have to see me again until next Tuesday. A sector is a portion of the area of a circle. The entire area of the circle would just be the area, but a sector is like a slice of it, like a piece of pizza. This would be my piece of pizza right here. Big old piece like that. What's that? You have the other one, the whole entire thing here? Yeah, right. My brother had two Little Caesars pizzas all by himself. He w it was during training season, so he was, he was, uh, what's that? Two Little Caesars pizzas? Get out of here. I think it really messed up his body because he had a seizure right afterwards, so it wasn't a good idea. So uh, don't uh, don't ever eat two whole little Caesar's pizzas. Anyway, let's uh, we got six minutes here. Let's finish this up. The area formula is right here. Again, just like arc length, the angle has to be in radians. So make sure that's clearly marked in your notes, so when you take the quiz next time, you don't forget. Because I may just give you a picture that the angle's in degrees. You never know. You never know what I'm gonna do. So let's follow the formula. It's one half times the radius squared. Radius squared is 81 because it's 9 squared. Times what? Times the angle. Times pi over 5. And this is not something that you just type in your calculator and hit enter. I want this to be in terms of pi. In terms of pi means leave pi in your answer. So m make everything, I, I guess the easiest way to explain this is make everything into a fraction and then multiply a fraction. How do you multiply fractions? Straight across. There you go. So this is 81 pi over 10. And that does not simplify. Our unit of measure is miles, but you guys know how to describe area in terms of it's not just 81 pi miles, it's square miles. Yeah, area is always square, like square footage or square mileage or square kilometers. That's how you describe area. And there you go. We're done.